Hey folks, the other day I did a video about a new law in Pennsylvania. And doing that video and thinking about that video and reading the law and, and reading the politician's motivation behind the law, I began questioning. I began questioning the power of the gospel. What is the power of the gospel? And I know that's going to sound strange coming from a priest, but what is it? I mean, if, if you're out there in the world and you're listening at all, you're going to hear very religious voices on one hand proclaiming Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, proclaiming the necessity for every person to accept the gospel of Jesus Christ. And yet many of those same voices that make that proclamation are exactly the same ones who petition our governments to enact legislation, to put laws in place that dictate how people should and should not behave, what they should and should not be allowed to do, what is acceptable and what is unacceptable, what is legal and what is criminal. And they do those things in the name of Jesus Christ, proudly tell the world that they do those things in the name of Jesus Christ. And so for me, the question comes up. So for the Christian out there, where is the power of the gospel most evident? How should the power of the gospel be used? What is the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Is the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ found in legislation that the church can push through? Is it found in the bills and the laws we're able to enact to make society operate in, in a way that we, the church, deems to be right and just and moral? Is that the power of the gospel? The power of the gospel is found in our ability to lobby politicians to do what we want? No place in the Bible that I'm aware of is the power of Jesus Christ, the power of the good news of Jesus Christ ever described in that way. The power of the gospel from start to finish is always described as something that can transform the world through the transformation of individuals, through the growth of individuals, through the sacrifice of individuals, through the love of individuals. The gospel is never at anywhere, in any way, shape, or form in the New Testament do any of the writers ever say, so now that you've got Jesus, you need to seize power. You need to find a way of gaining power over the governing body of your state. And then using that power to make sure that everybody lives a good life. Now this ultimately is what the church pretty much tried to do not too long after its formation. Right? Like what I'm describing to you right now is not a, a, something that just started happening in the 20th century. It's been going on for a very, very, very long time. For an incredibly long time. The church, long ago, decided to abandon Jesus' suggestion that we be a servant to all. That the more we give to our community, the greater we will be. The more we sacrifice for our community, the greater we will be. We long ago abandoned that suggestion. It was tough being the church. It was really difficult being the church. It was really difficult being persecuted and hated by our neighbors. It was really, really difficult being beaten and tortured and murdered, being reviled. It was really, really difficult being oppressed. And at some point, the church decided they were done with it. And that the best way going forward was to find a way of seizing power, of becoming the law.
And it was in that moment that the church began moving away from the true power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It was in that very moment that the church began shifting their allegiance. That was the moment when we began trusting ourselves instead of trusting God, instead of putting our trust in God's word, instead of keeping faith in Christ. How many times does Jesus tell us our, our lives are going to be difficult following him? How many times does Jesus tell us our lives are going to be difficult believing in him, being the church? How many stories do we read in the New Testament where the disciples of Jesus Christ are treated really, really badly? How many stories in there in our church tradition tell us about the demise of those early disciples, tell us about the pain and the suffering that those early believers for those first few hundred years suffered? This religion of ours is not a religion of power and authority. It's a religion where we are called to relinquish our power and our authority. That we are called to follow Christ barefoot across the hot coals. We are called to follow Christ in places that we, we wouldn't normally want to go. The power of the gospel of Jesus Christ is found in how it can change the world by changing you and I, by helping you and I grow, by helping you and I become the people that God created us to be, by helping us let go of the earthly power, the, the earthly authority, the earthly safety. There is only one gospel. And that gospel never, ever tells us to monitor and legislate the behaviors of our neighbors. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face be made to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted up to you. May you always know the peace of being in the Lord's presence. And I pray that you and I would allow the true power of the gospel of Jesus Christ to work in our lives in such a way that as we are transformed we are able to offer ourselves more and more to this world around us to make it the place that God envisioned it to be. Amen.